St. Louis really became uh, a type center in 1840. In 1840, there was 16,000 people living here, and immigration was starting to move west. And the first type foundry in St. Louis was in 1840, St. Louis type foundry. And they didn't do too much here other than make type for newspapers. But by 1870, after the Civil War, huge amounts of immigration were coming west uh, from the east and from overseas. And uh, there was a need for many more newspapers, not just in St. Louis, but all over the west and the southwest. And there was a great demand for type. And so the St. Louis Type Foundry got some competition from a new type foundry called the Central Type Foundry. And they began designing new typefaces for advertising. And that's one of the reasons that advert, uh, the type foundries were able to uh, survive even longer as they had not only your standard typefaces you see in the newspaper and the books and the magazines, but these wild designs, uh, designs of type that were used in advertising to capture people's attention and as manufacturing all over the country uh, was trying to bring get people to buy their products. They, they saw the need for advertising type. So, can you still find some of the typefaces made by Central and Inland um, in St. Louis? Well, in St. Louis, yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's a number of collectors uh, of type or letterpress printers in, in St. Louis that have collected it. And, you know, who knows where there might be some hiding somewhere. Uh -huh. uh, they do turn up. I've, when I was living in St. Louis, I turned up some St. Louis made type. Uh -huh. um, but here at Firecracker Press and some of the other letterpress printers in St. Louis have, have collected some of this type. And it's not just in St. Louis. It's all over the country because Central Type Foundry and its later incarnation of Inland Type Foundry sold nationwide and internationally. Do you see a lot of um, St. Louis typefaces in printed ephemera in St. Louis, or um, do you ever find them in in the stone or in the? Do they kind of exist in other places, kind of marking St. Louis? Well, you see, you see. Uh, some of these typefaces everywhere in, in national publications, particularly things like Harper's and, 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 and magazines and newspapers all over the country after 1880s, 1880, 1890, and later, uh, they're all over. Uh, if you know what to look for, you just, you can recognize certain typefaces. Oh, that's St. Louis made typeface from the England Type Foundry. Um, and some of these types were continued to be made even long after these local type foundries went out of existence because the, the, the single monopoly of uh, American type founders continued to make them into the 1950s, uh, 1950s and 1960s and, and, and later. Uh, well, I was actually wondering <laughs> if you had a few favorites <laughs> from it. Central and Inland. Uh, I was wondering, do you have ones that you're particularly fond of? One of my favorite typefaces from uh, St. Louis it came from the Central Type Foundry and it's called Art Gothic. Oh. It was, uh, came out in the early 1880s designed by Gustav Schroeder uh, and cast first here in St. Louis. It received mixed reviews <laughs> by the, the, art, the type critics and uh, but it became an extremely top interface and you see it in a lot of national magazines used in advertising in the 1880s and 1890s and even a little bit into the 20th century and it, it's available digitally today. I have a face in my own collection uh, and if anybody remembers the, uh, the te television program Murder She Wrote, that was the type that was used uh, in, the, in the words Murder She Wrote on, on the television program. That's interesting because that was long before it was digitized, too. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure where how they did where, it. How but. they did that, where they came from, but somebody recognized that type. I'm, it's available. I, I've, I've seen it used by a number of different uh, fellow letterpress printers around the country. So it's it is it was it was popular enough that it still exists in quite a few collections. Man. 
history. I, I didn't know anything about printing when I uh, when I got married, and I married a woman who, whose father was a type of collector and a hobby printer. And uh, I have to tell about my wife. She, I didn't marry her for her dad's type collection because I knew <laughs> nothing about it at the time. But uh, she was, she grew up with it. She liked to print, her dad liked to print. I became intrigued with it. Uh, to fast forward to 1992, her father passed away. Uh, we inherited this collection of type and moved it from my hometown in La Crosse, Wisconsin to St. Louis where I was living at the time. And I uh, started looking at the type and there's, there's a, a little mark on the side of the type that says, uh, oftentimes says where this was made. And I found some from Chicago, from Boston, from New York, and Philadelphia. And I said, oh, there's some from St. Louis. I need to know more about this. And that's what got me started uh, researching the St. Louis type foundries. And it just grew and grew. It took me about 10 years to research all this on my own. And uh, through the right circumstances, I was able to write a book and get it published in, 19, in 2005. That's, that's an amazing story. I had not heard that story that the, it came from the mark on the... It came from the type itself, yeah. Wow. Yeah. In my research, there were so many coincidences as I went along, uh, looking at someplace random and coming across the information I, I've been looking for, something I had not expected that just got took me off in another direction. Uh, found out about the, uh, the labor unions and labor strikes at uh, the local type foundries. There were two of them in the 1890s, another one in the early 1900s. And I just saw a little reference to it. And that led me into a new direction to, and new places to research. And I got a whole chapter in my book out of all that. What, what were your primary resource materials? Oh, it was deep into the vaults of libraries? Or what, where'd, you, where'd you get most of your real your, your primary information? Well, it, most of my primary information came from, well, it came from several places. The St. Louis Public Library has a wonderful collection of uh, resources for the local type foundries. Uh, and I spent many, many hours down there. Uh, but I had, to, I had to travel. And this was before the internet age. So I had to travel to New York, to Washington, to Boston, and uh, to Columbia, Missouri. The State Historical Society, uh, as well as the Missouri Historical Society, where I was working to get some additional resources, but it was all uh, all primary resource material that uh, helped me develop that story.